Sometimes when using a list view, you'll want to display data that is not homogeneous. In other words, you might need to display a different cell for different types of data. So for example, in this demo, what I've got is I have a list of posts. So think Twitter, Facebook, or a blog, or something like that. And there are two different types of posts. There are regular posts, and then there are also sponsored posts. Now, sponsored posts are like ads that a sponsor has paid money for. So we would probably want to format those a little bit different, to give them a little more promise and prominence to make them stand out. We've seen how we can use templates to create custom cells. And we can do the same, and we're going to do the same thing in this example here. However, we need to have a way to select which cell to use for which type of data. And for that, we're going to use something called a data template selector. Now, before we get into the code, in order to use data template selectors, you have to be using at least Xamarin Forms version 2.1. Now, when I created this solution here, it had Xamarin Forms version 2.0.1. So all I did was I just right click on packages, clicked update, and it automatically updated all the, all the packages because they're NuGet packages. And I had to do the same for the Droid and iOS project as well. So let's take a look now at the code. So first of all, I've got a post in here. A post has an author and a title. And it also has this bool to say whether or not it's a sponsored post. So if it's true, it's a sponsored post. If it's false, it's a regular post. And what this will do is we'll use this to is this is the property here that the data template selector will use to determine which data template to use. So let's take a look at that data template selector. So first of all, it derives from data template selector, which is in the Xamarin.forms namespace. And then what we're going to do is we're going to declare a public property of data template for each template that we want to that we want to use in the list. And here, so here we have a regular template and a sponsored template. Then we're going to override this onSelectTemplate method. And the onSelectTemplate method is going to be passed an item. Now that item is going to be the object in the list that we, that we bound to. So in other words, it's going to be a post. So what we'll do is we'll cast it to a post, and then we'll check the sponsored property. And if it's true, we'll return a sponsored template. Otherwise, we'll return a regular template. So most of the magic actually happens in the XAML, but let's go ahead and look at the data source real quick. So the data source, as you can see here, I've got nine posts. Three of them are sponsored. And then also in the main file or the application class, I'm just setting the main page to a new instance of the post page. And the post page is right here. The code behind, all I'm doing is I'm setting the item source of the list view. And then here is the XAML. So down here I've got the list view. What I'm saying is for the item template, I'm not going to put an item template using elements. I'm going to set this item template as an attribute. I'm going to use this static resource binding with the name of post data template selector, which is going to refer to that post data template selector class that we just saw, or an instance of it. So first, so let's take a look at our templates now. So the templates are going to be stored in the resources section of the page inside of a resource dictionary. A dictionary has key value pairs, so we're going to have two data templates. The first one is going to be, has the key of regular post template, which will be used to display regular posts. The other one has a key of sponsored post template, which will be used to display sponsored posts. And they're pretty much alike. The only difference is that the sponsored post has this little annotation down here at the bottom that says it's a sponsored post and puts it in bold green text to make it stand out a little bit. OK, then what I have is I have the instance of the post data template selector with this key. Now notice that the namespace for this is local. And I've declared that up here in the root element of the page by saying, that we're going to find data template selector in the namespace data templates and the assembly data templates. So data templates assembly, that's named for us by default when we create the solution and also this namespace. But if you look over here, 
you can see that the post data template selector is in the namespace data templates. So that so then, so then we can use the post data template selector in the local namespace. Give it a key, and then we'll say that for the sponsored template, which is a property of post data template selector in the code, what we're going to do is we're going to use the static resource of sponsored post template, which we have here, and for regular template, we'll use the regular post template, which we have up here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the only other thing I would say is that I've set the row here to be a little bit higher to accommodate the sponsored post template. So let's take a look at what it looks like in the code. Here it is in iOS. So as you can see, our three sponsored posts are called out, whereas the others do not have this extra text. And in Android, it's very, it's very much the same. And so you could now use this with the techniques that we've used in the previous videos about list views, such as swipes and interaction and all and data binding to create fairly complex applications.